Welcome in. Welcome back, folks. We are here live. This is a first of what may end up being many times that we're going to do a live show together. We are with you live from Jameson's Pub in Frankfurt, Illinois, 9545 West St. Francis Road. This is an old watering hole. It's Jameson's Irish. We got the whole thing going, Mike. Amen. This is a beautiful thing. I like being live. If you're from the area, I'm sure you're familiar, but no. Um, a little bit of batting practice for John and I. Yeah. A little bit of a not completely dry run as we're having a couple pops. But uh, coming off the bye week, we thought we'd try with something a little bit unique. So here we are. Yeah, this is uh, this is something we've wanted to do for a while, and uh, and we're glad to make it happen. And so, Mike, we need to get into this. Uh, we have not been together since the playoff committee has made their announcements. We do our live stream on a Monday night. The committee came out Tuesday. Notre Dame is in the 10th spot. From my show and everybody I've talked to, everybody feels like that is actually a pretty fair spot. I have not seen a lot of Notre Dame people crying that it's unfair or unjust. Um, pretty fair spot. And if you win, you're in, that kind of thing. Uh, what are your initial reactions, Notre Dame in the 10 spot? I got to say, I don't care so much about the spot, the rank. I care about the opponent. But there's no way to even know that. So when they have that bracket now and we're matched up on the road at Penn State, that means nothing right now, right? Because it's all theoretical and this is all going to change. There's no way any of this these seeds are going to stay where they're at now. Fair enough. Right? So like, that, mean, am I that mean your ranking can change too? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's six of these, I believe. So there's six of these. And the other thing that's great, the other thing that's going to change is the top four seeds in these conferences get the buy. So yeah. then you you kind of re everything gets re-ranked because those home seeds are those buys are going to be in one spot and then everybody else is going to be ranked differently. So this is all going to change. I don't think a lot of Notre Dame people would be afraid to go play Penn State, uh personally. What I saw when I saw it roll out, because again, it's it's the first of many iterations of these rankings, et cetera. Who's gonna play who? But the the first view of it. Go, go knock off Penn State. Go beat Miami. Yeah. And it's the way that it kind of shaped up. I'm like, we're in the Final Four. And, I mean, not to bullshit or blow smoke, I'm like, I could see that happening. If, if that's our steps, yeah. Penn State, Miami, I can easily see it happening. Yeah. So, I just think there's so much football to be played. A lot of the teams ahead of us either have tough games or they have to play each other. Think about it. Indiana, Ohio State have to play. Somebody's going to rank is going to change when they play. Indiana. Tennessee, Georgia. Tennessee, Georgia play. So something's going to change there. Hey, we do the picks to click over there on Patreon. Yeah. I might pick Michigan to win this week. Michigan's a 14 and a half point dog yeah. Indiana. Yeah. Surely they'll cover. Indiana hasn't seen anybody with any sort it's of like talent. It's true. You know, when the talent gets ratcheted up, the speed gets ratcheted up. It's true. have seen it. So they, Indiana might get knocked off this week. There is a world, Mike. I don't like <laughs> we're in public. I don't want to raise my voice. Trip, I don't don't want to my raise my right? voice. I look at you, I look over here. I'm thinking about that too. Both, both. We're doing it, but we're doing it both ways. Think about this, Mike. Is Johnny Boy in a position this weekend to root for Michigan to beat Indiana wow. and Brian Kelly to beat Alabama? And give that Alabama would have their third loss and be knocked out of the playoff field with three losses. And then follow me. I'm about to blow your mind. You're going to need another beer. I'm going to blow your mind. Follow me. If Brian Kelly beats Alabama, Notre Dame will have wins over both the teams that beat LSU. Think about it. USC. So if Notre Dame goes 4-0 in this playoff, they would have a win over USC, who beat LSU week one, and then Texas A&M. So it, that would be a way where Alabama would be out with three losses, and then we would be perpetually ahead of Brian Kelly and LSU because we will have beaten both the teams that and knocked LSU, them off. And then conceivably LSU could still catch another loss this season. They could, or try and sneak in at the bottom of the rankings with two losses. However, what are the odds they're going to get into the SEC title game and how that would affect their where they're going to be I don't know, but there's a lot of interesting. There's a lot of interesting oh. stuff going on. November football, baby. November so football. Many different directions it can go. And you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about on Patreon. Would you rather? Would you rather make the playoff and get your teeth kicked in, 
go home with your tail between your legs, or would you rather miss the playoff, go win a nice bowl game, get some momentum rolling for the next season? I went the latter route. But when I'm thinking about potentially getting your teeth kicked in in that scenario, I'm thinking about the Bama's league. I'm thinking about the Bama's world. So if you tell me that a Bama yeah. is, is, can't get invited to the dance, as a Notre Dame fan, that's a huge sigh of relief, Jeff. Your take on this, I feel, applied way more to a four-team playoff field sure. than a 12. Because of four, you could see a Notre Dame sneaking in there, and there's three really – Alabama, Ohio State, you know, Georgia or something. Those are three teams that would be picked over Notre Dame, I believe. But in a 12-teamer, you're saying get your teeth kicked in. When? In round one? In round three? Like, when are you getting – when does the teeth kicked in part come? It depends on the matchup. It depends on the matchup. That's true. That's true. So, you know, if it's a Boise it's State, true. if it's a Penn State, it, it just depends okay. on the matchup. But when that scenario – Yeah. But that's that emotional scarring from seeing Bama in yeah. 2012 yeah. take you up out in the woodshed. Yeah. Well, I want to avoid that scenario at all costs. Do you feel like Notre Dame's program is – how much different do you feel Notre Dame's program is than when, oh. we, when we ran those teams we'll out? Fucking, they're a lot we'll faster in 2012. We're going to find out. They're a lot faster than we were in 2012. I know we're that. We're going to fuck around, and we're eventually going to find out. But, yes, we do look faster. The athletes look different. I'm way more optimistic. Yeah. I, is it fair to be a little bit reserved? Be a little it hesitant? Is. I think that's fair. Um, Coming from anybody but you. What about <laughs> Captain Worry over here? What about um, what about the difference between hosting and going on the road? To me, I do not want to over-exaggerate what a big difference it would be, regardless of the matchup, to host somebody the, the 20th of December, whatever, in South Bend, as opposed to Congratulations, you're in the playoff and you're going to the horseshoe or you're going to play Georgia or yeah, something. Yeah. There is a big difference to me in how this could all go. You gotta get up, you gotta get five to eight. So you gotta move into the the five through eight seats you, to be able to host. That's what you're looking at. Season, I'm like, we're gonna get eight. Okay. I just, I just, I just see it. Like we're gonna we're gonna slot it in. Eight. You hear five, you hear and you're at ten now. But I'm okay. Like, okay, it's gonna be eight. Okay. If he helps that home football game. The road environment, the playoff environment, the weather's a massive advantage for a lot of these, you know, yep. teams that like would be boat racers, yeah. would be team kickers. Yeah. But I think, John, all things Notre Dame, you know, a spark in a fan base, a spark in a program. Yeah. Can't you just see that? Like what that could do holistically for the group? Like, boom, we got our home game and you won it. Don't get me excited like that, Mike. But that I mean, is like big that's history. Stuff, that stuff warms my heart. That's Notre Dame history. Think about. All right, I almost am mad at you that you brought this up. The whole drive over here, I was thinking about this, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. But you're talking about a lot of Notre Dame history, or you would be hosting the first game ever that late in Notre Dame Stadium, a home playoff game that's unheard of, never happened before. Rockney and Lee, you'd be smiling in the rafters there in your old locker room. They'd be smiling. Here's the other thing, though. If you win that game, no matter who it's against, the 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 non Power Five team, that maybe the last seed, or whoever it's against, it's the first major bowl game we won since ninety three, ninety four, right? Yeah. That's a lot of history, Mike. I, that's that changes things. That's a lot of history you're changing I mean, there. That's like bringing it full. Oh, baby, it's bringing it full circle. And sure, you go on the road and beat Penn State at Penn State. Fine. But to do it at home, it's, different. it's just something you can't quite put your finger on. Yeah. But like momentum wise for Freeman, the yeah. culture in the program. Um, how Man. about this, Mike? The fan base deserves something like that. We've been so loyal you for so know. long and so miserable. I think it's time we get something on the what high end to the celebrate. Base? What part of the fan base? Not the talking? wine and cheesers. But they're going to, well, they'll Fair have enough. first dibs on all those those playoff tickets, by the way. I just want to make they'll that They'll have clear. first dibs on all I those tickets. Clear. What sect of the fan base are we talking about? Yeah. But no, for sure. For the, sure. The, and that's, again, that just, it'd be special. Man. It would be really, really special. And that's another reason. This, okay, let's move this forward. And this is, this is the perfect transition point on this discussion. Here's the qu I told you before this. I have a question for you about this playoff thing. Hit me. Ever since the playoff committee announced what they did, 
everything on Twitter, all my text messages, all my emails, everything on my show, everything has been about Notre Dame's in the 10. How do they move up? Like you said, who are they going to play? Can we move up to a home seat or whatever? I know where you're going with this. Are we getting way ahead of ourselves? How reckless is it for fans and the beat media and people like me, everything we're doing, all my article, my little articles are about, you know, whatever, what the playoff. Uh -huh. How dangerous is this? And my question is, how aware of all of these scenarios are you guys as players? How aware of you are of this circus surrounding this entire project? How would that affect you as a team member, as a captain, as a total team? How would you process something this dramatic? They didn't have this when you were well, there, Mike. This shit didn't exist. It's interesting. So I don't think the team is going to be... I and that's Freeman's job is to kind of shelter them from all of these would-be scenarios. And you're focusing on, you know, the task at hand, day by day, quarter by quarter, play by play. It's, that's been the mentality. And I know that it's fun for fans to kind of just prognosticate for sure. But, yeah, it is. It, it's precarious because you're going to do it to yourself. There was, there was a time, John, a week or two ago where we were like, it really felt like the team – and the fans, we're in lockstep. Yeah. We're going to win this thing quarter by quarter, game by game. Right? That's the closest that you're going to become to be, as a fan, to being a part of that team. It's like we have the same mindset, the same approach. Yeah. And then now that we're like, you know, we got our pinky toe in the water. You can see the light. People, you start spiral. Yeah. So don't spiral. But you're a 26-point favorite against Florida State. I think it's the bet of the weekend, by the way. I yeah, I yeah, I didn't even get there yet. We'll get to them because that's all weird too. Okay, so then let me, let me, I think, I think it's important that the team paid attention to the rankings, know exactly where they are. I do think it's healthy that they understand where they're at. And I do think it's very healthy that they understand the position they're in and what's on the line yeah. and that you could see the light at the end of the tunnel for four more games. So I think there's a balance there of knowing what where you're at and that you fought yourself back into playoff position. That's healthy. But then you got to find a way to turn that off no and just worry about the next four games. Because if you lose any of them, you're out. If you're you're on, done. If you're, you're on done. That, if you're on that team, we talked about it before, like kind of the mindset going into these games, like a back against the wall approach. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with yeah. that. Now, I, just the last thought, let's go dominate. Leave no doubt. Here's what I'm going to say to offset my worry I just shared. My worry about getting ahead of ourselves, looking at these matchups, booking the hotels in South Bend the week of Christmas, you know, not to see Granny, but for another reason, all this shit. What makes me We're feel getting an RV, John? We're taking the show. Oh on the my road. god, dude! I looked up party buses on Chicago Craigslist. Try and buy a party bus. An RV is the smart thing can, to do. Class CRV. Oh my gosh, dude! You hook up a little. Make sure you have Wi-Fi, and you can watch the other games. You can podcast from it. You can party from it. You can sleep in it. You can drive in it. We bring this show on the road. Cheaper than a, what the hotel cost is going to be. It's not even close. And you can record you can right cook from it. Out of there, need be. We had the smoke coming out the top, Breaking Bad style. Um, here's what makes me feel better about this, Mike. If we were playing Michigan. <laughs> Oh. And we were cooking meth, oh. we'd make a killing. They'd be lining up. <laughs> it's just a food truck. <laughs> oh, nothing like mama's cooking. <laughs> Anyways, Here's on. what I'm going to say. I felt a responsible obligation to bring up the trap of us all looking at these matchups before you win these four games. You got to win to get it. But I will say this. This team has been forced to play with a sense of urgency ever since week two. You have had no margin and no leeway to play with since it was 90 degrees outside in September. You have had no leeway, and it has not phased this team a damn bit. And they have been winning all their games. They have had injury after injury after injury, and all they do is keep winning, keep winning, keep winning. I'm waiting for the drop-off in production to play, and it hasn't come in. The defense keeps playing good. The offense keeps getting a little better. I like what I'm seeing. So I am encouraged that this team will not lose lose sight of the prize because they have had to have that focus since week two. That gives me confidence. Absolutely. And, and the other thing that's – you get excited about the the effort. 
and the intentionality, the approach, you know, but it's also the continued improvement. Yeah. Of like a, specifically of a Riley Leonard. Yep. Because I mean, he was so bad, John, to start the season. Yeah. And he's become so good. I mean, there's still limitations. Um, I got to give you credit, Mike. Damn it. I hate doing this, but like, I got to tell you, you were right again. I remember in the summer and we were building to this season. Yeah. What is going to be good? What's going to be a challenge? What do we think of this squad? And the one thing you kept saying is everybody needs to chill out thinking Riley Leonard's just going to run in here and this offense is just going to click and yeah. it's just going to flow. You kept telling me, I don't think everybody understands what coming in here, dropped in here, and then missing all spring, and you got a new OC and a new O-line and all these new guys and everything. You were the one that said it could take some time for this offense to find itself. Sure enough, it took some time for the offense to find it. So you were right again. Well, so it's, it's, But it's just fun to – I don't think that that was that hot of a take. But, yeah, I mean, the continued improvement, you get Billy Shroud back – arguably your best offensive line. So if you just see marginal improvements around the team, then it's like, okay, eventually we're going to roll out what is considered a finished product for that playoff game. Yeah. So it's just like that's all you want to track is over the next three, four weeks, the level of domination. And then, okay, like when we go through it on the all 22, for the fine tooth comb, we're like, okay, that looks better, this looks better, et cetera. Um, Second bye week for some of these young kids too. It's crucial. Yeah. And unlike last year, these bye weeks have come at the perfect time in this schedule. Last year, I had a huge beef because we went to Ireland and threw everything off. You had eight weeks until your first bye, and that's too long. Intercontinental travel. Brutal. Night games for a month in a row, and you had eight games till it. That was horrible. These breaks are well-positioned, well-timed. Well, last season was a fucking setup. It was. It was a setup. And we walked right into it and thought it was awesome because it's fun to play everywhere. And then every night game ended up being a prime time game of the week on the road, everything. It was a bad deal. Um, can I ask you, are you surprised at all we have not seen a real drop-off in play due to all these injuries? I admit I am. I am surprised. You have really not seen a drop-off. And, and, and I know the schedule has not been the murderer's row. But they've been getting good production out of guys that have been forced into more snaps than they would ever play if this team was healthy. I kept waiting for the drop-off, and it has not happened. It's impressive to me. As with anything, I think it's nuanced, though, right? So it's like, you know, you lose a Jagasaw. That was number one injury. It's like, well, we didn't really know how good he was. He had started one yeah. career game. Right yeah. The bowl game. But then, like, the Shroud loss hurt. But then you had the experience into your guys in Rocco and Coogan. <laughs> And then the level of the, you know, the level of the opponent, John, yeah, wasn't such where you're like, oh my god, we look, you know, that backup looked horrible. That's true. But the one shining star, though, to me is Leonard Moore. Yeah, I mean, Benjamin Morrison was widely known as your best player, your most draftable, highest drafted player, and that's like, holy smokes. Um, and man, the, and the, the other, the other, other thing, my only gripe of the uh, the defense thus far, at times it's the run defense, but that's scheme. It's not the kids. And the lack of ability to get to the quarterback with your front four. Yeah. So the loss of a Traore, who was like, Traore was on the same trajectory as like a Jeremiah Love jump. Yeah. Now, we don't notice it yet. But you bet your ass if I was playing a Penn State or something, I would want yeah. Traore on the field if I had my druthers. Uh, don't forget, I mean, Batello too. He, he seemed like he was finding. back, dude. Yeah. He seemed like he was finding his role, his niche. Finally, oh. he dropped all that weight and turned it into muscle and everything. And then right when you get excited, him and they're both those guys are out right when you get There's excited about them. that I root for and it deserves a break. It's Jordan Batello. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I've been impressed that, that they have been able to come back and with their backs against the wall after week two, through the injuries and everything, and they've, they've, they have not lost. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what surprises me. I understand, I fully admit, that the schedule in the middle part of the season has not been murder's row. I know that. Did you know through October, Notre Dame had the number one point margin differential of any team in America mm -hmm. So if you want to say they haven't played Murder's Row, I agree with you. But then what you could say is the teams they have played, they've been kicking the crap they've out of. Been they've been laying the wood. They've been laying the wood. Taking care of business. <laughs> Every yeah. way. Yeah. And 
I'm impressed by that because if you're not going to play Murderers Row and you want to show that you're good, the next best thing you can do is kick the crap out of teams. But as we talk about it. Why does it yeah. ever feel? Like, why does it ever feel? Because I'm me. Because I'm telling as you. dominant as the numbers show. Because I'm needy and I'm greedy. That is why I am needy and I'm greedy. And everybody wants everything to be pretty. And you know what? Okay, here's a part of it, Mike. If you don't have a flashy pass game, your yeah. offense is going to look right. Even if you're running the ball good, the yeah. offense isn't going to look beautiful. If you just picture like deep passes and guys open and like you want whatever, knockout, you want like, knockout shots. yeah, and like if you're you want just knockout shots. I just think if you don't have a flashy pass offense, you're always going to seem kind of clunky or not pretty. And maybe that's unfair. Which maybe that's unfair. Which ironically is like the last. Stone, yeah, but like we've kind of got to unturn on, offense. yeah, to really be able to get it fully open up. Okay, so then this is another good transition. We're getting good at this. Here's another one transition that discussion into Florida State this week and into the four games remaining. Here's something I've really been spending a lot of time thinking about Does Mike Denbrock have any little wrinkles left for November football for this offense? To where now he says, you know what? This offensive line starting to come together. I trust them a little bit more than I did after Purdue when everything everybody was hurt. Riley Leonard, my guy running all this shit, he looks a lot more comfortable. And, and he looks like he has command and, and confidence running this offense. What does Mike Denbrock have left in the tank as a wrinkle to give these guys confidence so that the offense is trending up through November? Not just treading water. Yeah. You're trending up. He's Mike Denbrock ain't the type of dude to just sit there status quo. I'm good. What can he pull out? So when you say wrinkle, people people's minds, or maybe maybe it's just me, but my mind jumps to like trick play type stuff. So I think I believe this is just my instinct. I think that we're gonna trim some fat from the playbook, John. Coming out of this buy. Oh, it, that's an interesting angle. We're Explain lean, that. We're going to lean out that game plan, lean out that playbook, and like, here's the packages that we like based off of the look back. And what we know we can run, and what we're confident that when we need it, we could go to it? 100%. Or, I, think okay. I think you're going to trim fat. But wait, is that the. Should you do that and do what I'm saying? Well, if you'd let me finish. Yes, you can. But like the new wrinkle, like to me, it's like. I think they know that they, you know, Mitch Evans is still a continuing wrinkle. Yeah. I think he's going to continue to get better and better and better. And I think the usage of Jeremiah Love is like somewhat of a wrinkle. That's like, mm, that's a saying, good angle. That's a good angle. I mean, if we get into a slugfest playoff game, again, high stakes, maybe a wrinkle is like, I'm just going to feed. The best athlete on the offense. I'm going to beat him. You what a novel him. concept. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what a wild idea. I love, you know, you love the running what a back. wild idea. You love the running back rotation. I fully appreciate it. Yeah. I, you know, I even, I like it. But your stud is your stud, and you feed your stud. There is no tomorrow, John. That's a good point. So I just think that's more of a realization versus yeah. a ring. That's a, that's a good, that's a fair point. All right. So let's move this all forward to Florida State. Here's what's messing with my head. Look, you know, you know, we all do this. You probably did it on Blue and Gold, too. I did it on my YouTube channel. You're sitting there in the summer. What are we going to talk about? Oh, the schedule. Predict the wins and loss, blah, 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 blah. This is going to be a big game. This is going to be a big game. I had Florida State circled. Same. I had November 9th circled. Same. And what I said is this: the playoff could be on the line for both these teams. Heated rivals in Notre Dame Stadium in November. Playoff on the line. Could you imagine what that moment's going to be like? And here we are, the playoffs on the line, but only for one side of this situation. Mm -hmm. I'm a little in my own head about, are we going to have the right mentality? The, the players and the fans that come to this game, is there any let up because these guys are so horrible? Like, like you can't be the team that lets these guys get another win. They're one and eight. You can't be the team to give them another win. It's messing with me how bad they are. I have zero concerns. They're I, really bad, Mike. They're horrible. They're injured. They're horrible. They're, they're really they no bad. Quarterback. Uh, offensive think, line is really bad. I'm telling you, like, they're one bad. Of the, one of the most fun parts about football is they're like, bad. to dominate somebody. They're so bad. And this is a game where we should dominate them. What is it? A 26 point it's spread? 26. Ooh. It's the bet of the week. Dominate them. 
the lock of the week. They can dance on their graves because you know what? We've been up. They've been up. Yeah. It is a fun rivalry. When you got them down, dance on their grave. Yeah. It's um. It's still Florida State. You know, I it's did. It's not our fault they suck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I And I've been saying that about our schedule, too. I'm taking all this crap about Notre Dame's schedule. I said, listen, you got A&M on the front end of this schedule. And then you got Florida State and, and USC on the back end. It is not Notre Dame's, Dame's fault. Yeah. It is not Notre Dame's fault that those brand name helmets are having down ears. That's not really our fault. The back half of this schedule is supposed to be really tough with those I'll two teams in both in November. I was a little wishy washy midway through the season, you know, specifically about Freeman, but I give him all the credit in the world for kind of riding the ship. And he, I mean, oh man, okay. I mean, we do. We got four more games. All right. What happens to all this feeling? And I wrote an article about that too Every the other day. Playoff game, it's crazy. I wrote an, an article about this comeback and and how much appreciation you got to have for the team and the staff with their back, their playoff back against the wall, winning, yeah, winning, winning, nice. winning, winning, winning. They just keep winning. You can't lose now. You you've come too far. You have won every time since week two. Now you're in the playoff chase, Mike. It would be absolutely devastating to drop a game now. To win and then go to L.A. and, and get beat out there or something and you're out of the playoff, it would be devastating. They have fought back so hard, and this staff and team deserve so much credit. But you got to finish it off. You cannot fall short. Now, we've come too far. Too we far. Gotta, we got to wrap it up. Kitchen's closing. i got to get a burger. But I played in that USC Coliseum. There's something different, John. And I don't know if it's the speed of the athletes in the yeah. era that I played. But I said this before, and I really mean it. The field's 100 yards long, 53 yards wide. Yep. When you go to that Coliseum, it feels like it's, it feels like it's 60 yards wide. Yeah. There's something about finishing out so there. Don't sleep. Uh, yeah. Don't sleep on any of these opponents. Yeah. And I would, I would really beg the fan base to jump back into the mindset of the team. And again, you know me, John. Like to do all the prognosticating and the what if. Well, if they lose here, then they jump up, and then they slide down, and he moves over. I, I will always find it nauseating. And again, I just like, let's let's win this damn game. Yeah. Let's dominate Florida State. Yeah. Dance on their grave. Ton of energy, ton of momentum. Yep. Moving on. Uh, and here's the other thing. Final thing on this Florida State game, and this is something you mentioned to me when you were driving today, I think. Um, big recruiting weekend. Big recruiting let's, weekend. Let's wrap it up on that. I you got, that. yeah, I'm you got a, you, that you got a lot of, you, I was thinking about it. You text me that you wanted to think about you got a lot of those guys in there. That 25 class was kind of teetering on the verge of making people real uncomfortable. The team on the field has come back around and people are feeling good about it. And now you've got a boatload of really good recruits in town and you got a beatable opponent, a night game. You're going to throw out all the stops and all the fireworks and the music and you're going to do whatever you're going to do. How do you feel about this, man? Things are trending up for the Irish, I got to say. Random thoughts. Outside of the Vanga boys, da, 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 da. you know, what else are the recruits going to get excited about? If I'm like a Den Brock or if I'm a Golden or if I'm one of these position coaches, Mickens or whoever is the case, you know, if, if it's if it's uh, Madden Ferriamo sitting in the stands, like, keep your eyes on KVA. That's how we want to use you in our scheme. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, is there something that we can do offensively and or defensively to kind of focus – comparable recruits and just, just showcase them and say, hey, listen, Derek Meadows, yep. this is how we want to use you, right? And the you know, the kids are none the wiser. And then the only other thought, let's wrap it up on this, because I'm starving. Drove in from Nebraska to see my buddy John. Had to go to a funeral. It wasn't dare John. I it wasn't say, John's, though. <laughs> dare I say, John, the recruits in town, might the fans at the gosh darn game have an effect on these recruits' experience? Yes or yes? I certainly hope so. Show them what it's like at a night game at Notre Dame Stadium. Show them what it's yep. like so when they leave there and they yep. go to their SEC game or the whatever, like, yep. oh, no, man, Notre Dame was kind of lit. Hear me out. I don't believe you're going to have a wine and cheese crowd for this one for, you say? for a few different reasons. One is night games. A lot of these riches, rich people that I know, yeah. they don't want to get home back to Chicago one or two in the morning after a night game, and they're too cheap. To, even though they got money, they're too cheap to pay eight hundred dollars a night for a shitty hotel in I South Bend. Yeah. So they're not going. Here's the other thing: November night game, 
oh, it's too chilly. The wine and cheesers don't want to be at September. Last year, Ohio State in the 60s, no problem. These people don't want to be cold. And then Florida State's no good. So all those wine and cheesers that have the tickets for this game, they're giving it to their 24-year-old kids and their friends that are going to drink 80 beers in the parking lot and actually be loud. I just think So I do not expect the wine and cheese crowd for this one. You're not going to have it. You ain't. I do love that, but I, you know, it's just something because it, it is such a huge recruiting weekend. Yep. And it's like you know you're supporting Freeman, bringing that energy. Yeah. But I just I I do want to see that. You know, even if we do put young kids in, you get into the backups in the fourth quarter. I want to keep it pedal the metal yep. again to get to leave an impression on yep. those recruits. Well, John, let's wrap yep. it up. Beautiful. Hey, you guys, thanks for being with us. Uh, this is a great test run, and this may be a teaser, you guys. Depending on how things go the rest of this year, we may or may not have a live event or two up our sleeve here to talk to about and maybe invite you guys too. So stay tuned for that. We'll see how things go. But thank you. Live from Jameson's. If you're in Frankfurt in the Chicago area in the suburbs, stop by, have a beer. It's a place to be. Thank you, guys.